Hello and welcome to a new YouTube exclusive Football Manager 2023 experience. You would be asking yourself, Polky Dude, where'd you get that oh so luscious and not at all fake mustache? And those obviously needed prescription glasses that you are wearing. Well, have I got news for you? I, along with this man next to me, have gone undercover for very, very good reason. Now, America. We're known for a great many things. Food, being fat, having good movies. Unfortunately, we're also known for calling one of the most, if not the most popular sport in the entire world, incorrectly. We call it soccer, everybody else calls it football. So, we decided, myself and some unnamed American compatriots that have a lot of money, is that we are going to infiltrate football near the highest level. We don't actually have enough, and it's not going to be ob or it's going to be way too obvious if we infiltrated at the highest level. So instead, we've decided to jump over and infiltrate at the lower levels of English football. We're going to rise to the top with our cleverly disguised, not at all, Amer obviously American team. And we are going to prove to the world, once and for all, that we Call it soccer, and soccer shall it be. So let me go ahead and introduce you to the team. So as I said, we are a new team within the sixth tier of English football, specifically Van Van the Vanarama, let's use our words, National League South. We are United St. Albans, also abbreviated as USA, obviously no relation if anybody asks. Myself and Amar, Isaac Khan. Uh, you can tell he's a real person by his obviously real name and not at all fake mustache or hairdo. Have taken over this club along with our American overlords who have decided to kidnap and replace all the members of the previously St. Albans Football Club. We've taken them, indoctrinated them, along with every other member of the team that will assemble along the way. And we will be, of course, trying to rise our way to the top. And eventually, one day, win the Premier League. We will throw off our disguises that no one at all will ever see through and say, this game is called soccer. So today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to meet the team, figure out our expectations, do a little bit of looking around, poking and prodding, seeing what all there is to see. And then at the end, we will get ready to play our first game. So go ahead. Come along as we look and see what's going on. I would like to start by go ahead and giving a big shout out to an individual named Lelugio. He's a big inspiration as to why I started the series. I've been watching him throughout the years. His YouTube channel will be linked down below. Feel free to check him out. He does content very similar to what I'm going to be doing. He's the one that inspired me to do this video. So without further ado, Khan takes charge of United St. Albans, a new club that we recently released. I had more £775 per week, which is much more than I got in my previous uh, save or previous head coach previously. Of course, we are completely new as a club and as an individual. So thank you very much, Mr. Media, for joining me. I will be meeting the team in just a moment, but for right now, go ahead and delay decision on all that as we try and figure out if we want to keep them all. As for our followers, we, of course, are only a low-down team. They're expecting us to finish top half, which I think we can do. As for the rest of it... Because this is a Road to Glory style series, we're taking this team from Tier 6 all the way up to the Premier League. We're going to be stuck here for a while. We're we'll playing a couple games each episode, jumping a few games ahead, of course, every single time. So you're not like watching game after game after game after game after game. We're just kind of giving you the highlights, keeping you updated, figuring out everything that's going on. Uh, inf moderate influence on the board, it's a very good thing to see. Some few seconds in tickets, not a huge number of fans, which is pretty much to be expected way down here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the club expectations. Negotiate this, see what we actually can negotiate. Where the club's reputation, I need to do that. Work within the payroll budget, I can do that. Be competitive about the cups, also a possibility of me doing. Uh, record a top half finish. Might be difficult depending on the nature of the team, but I assume, because we can't negotiate that at all, just going to have to say that is okay. Add a competition objective? No. So I will just simply confirm that and we can move on. 
Uh, they're looking for us to finish in the top half. There's the second qualifying round and the second round of the trophy. Also good. Payroll budgets are looking decent. Uh, go ahead and look at that. We do have about 600 pounds to play with, which is quite a bit at this level. Not really any transfer budget. We do have some overall budget, and we are looking surprisingly decent for our projection. I have a feeling that might change as time goes on. A little bit for scouting budget. We can make some requests later. We may end up doing that. Uh, so, United St. Albans. We are a completely new club. Go ahead and take a look at the kits. They have uh, colors that are no way, of course, inspired by the American flag. I at all had to go online and figure out what those colors are in the RGB and then go ahead and type them in here. But nice red and blue with the white colors for the uh, away jerseys. Very nice and neat stuff. We are expected to finish 11th place. Got a good senior squad team. Local reputation only. Though we are a professional personality, though we're semi-professional status. That seems kind of conflicting. If we're going to be professional, we should totally be professional. Uh, facilities. We've got the December Center as our home base. Get it? Uh, seated 5,000. We will need to upgrade this one day. We have poor stadium condition, unfortunately. Uh, decent dimensions, good field conditions, fairly average corporate facilities, below average training facilities, basic youth facilities. Fairly basic academy coaching and fairly basic... Uh, that's unfortunate. We have no in, uh, history, however... We did get a couple of affiliate clubs. So, uh, Biggles Wade Town, which are a SL Division 1 team, are going to be regularly sending us, or regularly hosting friendlies between the two teams. We're going to be sharing scouting knowledge. We also have an affiliate club, a local partnership in which players are loaned, for, coming up from the championship, which is very, very nice. But I understand these are one of the better championship teams. And we can request uh, friendlies between the two. I will host and keep all gate receipts. Oh, wow. That is very nice. Uh, no history, of course, because we've just recently joined the league. Uh, let's go ahead and meet Amar. His, his play during... He was once a player, of course. He went out. He was a, a regular semi-professional, a uh, semi-pro at the uh, kind of local level. He was known within the area, but his new... Identity, of course. 35 years old, born in 1986, within the town of St. Albans, because where would you, of course, go other than the area we're going to have? He is a professional soccer player at the regional level, a national B license. We can increase that as time goes on. Our contract is unfortunately only till the end of the season. It's kind of scary. No promises, no relationship quite yet. But I would like to start a coaching course. Uh, finances, I think that's good. So now, let us meet the team. Only got one goalkeeper. Is our first choice goalkeeper. We have no coach summary for him. Go ahead and pass the time a little bit and hope that that gets, uh, filled out a little bit more. Social feed has been updated. Homegrown player status has been dealt with. Uh, maybe we have to set up a tactic here. We're running a control possession, a Gagan press, or a Tiki Taka. I think we will do a control possession because that's probably the easy. Gagan press or tiki taka. I do like a tiki taka, so let's do this. They want a 4 3 3 DM wide. Not my favorite formation to play at this level. Ah, of course, we're missing staff. I have to handle all this right now because we don't have anybody. In fact, we have no staff. So for the next little bit, I will be taking care of everything. So let's get an assistant coach. Get a head of youth development. Head performance analyst. Get a goalkeeping and fitness coach. And moving on, we need a general manager. Scout. And a normal scout. And then finally, we need both a head physio and a physio. We have no staff, just the squad, which makes sense, considering everything that's happening and what have you. I'll be back once I get an assistant manager filled out, and so we can meet the team a little bit better so I can see some star ratings, figure out what's going on.
And we are finally back with an assistant coach. That was very obnoxious. For whatever reason, the first guy I tried to sign didn't want to sign with us. No one else wanted to sign with us because we're not an established team. Regardless, a week has passed. I played a friendly with no idea how good any of these players are. But we looked dominant. Specifically, Liam Soul looked especially dominant. So, let's meet the team. Uh, Michael Johnson, 3-star current ability, 3-star potential ability player, 28 years old. Eh. Next player, uh, Joy Mukena. Of course, I obviously apologize when I inevitably butcher names. I'm not good with names. I won't remember names. I'm not good with them. But if people stick around for long enough, I'll try to learn their names or I'll give them a nickname. Uh, this is a center back, two and a half star current ability, four star uh, potential ability. Is a perfect. That's not why well, I say perfect. Four star is not great. Uh, we have Michael Clark, two and a half star current ability, three star potential ability. We have uh, Tafiri Moore, a five star current ability, five star potential ability player, contracted for 1.3k per week. That explains why we have such a good player. We think he is a national level player, close to his full potential. Certainly someone we are going to want to keep. Uh, we have a substitute right back. That's... Why do we have right backs as our best players? You might end up playing our left back because that is something we can work on. Uh, regardless, four star current ability, four star potential ability, 220 pounds per week. Uh, Munchea Sundire, a midfielder or defensive midfielder, three star current ability, three and a half star potential ability player. We got Chris Paul, three and a half star current ability, four star potential, a 24 year old individual, 300 pounds a week, very good. Pez Isaac, Four star current ability, four star potential ability player. Another good player to see. Hugh Dawson, two and a half star current ability, five star potential ability. We are thinking up to the Stouse standard. Keep in mind, my assistant coach is really bad at judging potential, so keep all these with a grain of salt. We've got Kieran Wiltshire, who is not playing for us, and we're currently trying to get rid of because the system doesn't fit him particularly well. But three star current ability. Four star potential ability. We've got uh, Romano uh, Akanola, who is three and a half star current ability, four star potential ability player, worth a fair bit of money, actually. We are currently playing as a midfielder because we don't use wingers in the system I set up. And finally, we have our striker, Zane Banton, two star, two star, probably going to drop down to the bench. Well, he only has a one year contract. He does. He's also making. So much money. Uh, Liam Sola, the guy who worked, looked very, very good in our last match, only wants to play as a winger, but you are not a winger, friend. You are an attacking mid or a striker. What kind of striker do you want to be? Regardless, I'll figure that out. In the meantime, we have a 30 year old John Jeffers worth quite a bit of money, three or four and a half star credibility, four and a half star potential, probably going to be our main man up front as a poacher. Then we've got uh, Joel, a, uh, sorry, Joe Neal. Joel, combine your names. 21 year old, uh, 350 pounds a week, two and a half star credibility, five star potential, probably a player to look forward to in the future. Got Mitchell Weiss, two star, two star, probably going to be getting rid of him come the summer. Finally, George Morrell, two-star current ability, five-star potential ability player. Uh, very good to see. Tactics I've set up, for whatever reason, the game recommends either a... Oh, it no longer recommends those. A wing play of route one or a fluid counterattack system. I'll probably go with a fluid counterattack system. But uh, what I currently had set up is a... It's for whatever reason it recommended the top three, so I picked one of the top three. Probably not going to be playing a vertical tiki taka because that's a bit aggressive for down in this level, but something along these lines that I was thinking of a three at the front, three in the middle, th or four at the back, a four three three narrow. Because I saw we had a lot of strikers, we had a lot of midfield players, and we had a decent amount of backs. It's just kind of how it all worked out. I'll probably fiddle around 
with all of the various roles and figure out exactly what I want to do, but expect something like this in the days to come. Now let me go ahead and pause while I get everything sorted out. And I have returned. Here is probably going to be something along the lines of what we're looking like come opening day. A 4-3-3 narrow formation fluid counterattack that I've kind of fiddled with a little bit. Most people are playing in their preferred roles. Downside, of course, is we got some players who are pretty decent wingers, but we have this guy who can kind of play a little bit on the left but doesn't really want to. We have another guy, I think, sitting on our bench somewhere who can play a little bit on the wing but doesn't really want to. But we have a handful of strikers that everybody can play. Biggest problem we have right now is we have a lot of bloat. A lot of two-star, two-star ability players who I'm hoping I can move on during the season. If not, it'll be rough. But our squad is lacking very heavily in depth. Players that I want to play on the bench, we only have five. We don't even have a backup keeper just in case. We're probably going to be looking, once we finally get some scouts in here, to fill in with a lot of non-contracts, young players with a lot of potential that will be very good in the future. Uh, areas that we do need to look into, this guy, he's being paid so much money. Uh, I could play as an inverted wingback. I have him as a complete wingback just to, just for ease. Uh, what's the difference between complete wingback or just wingback? Well, I'll just let them do what they want. Very good uh, of our wingbacks, which I'm quite happy about. We have a couple of good strikers. Sean uh, Jeffers is our, our main one. He is a very solid player. Most importantly, he's contracted for under contract for two years. A lot of these players, for example, uh, Moore, he's only on contract to the end of the season. The decent chance we may be looking to move him on before the end of the year, just so we can get a little bit of money out of him because he's obviously probably not going to want to resign with us. And considering our finances, we can't be paying him like a f one sixth, almost twenty percent of our wage budget to be one player in an eleven man squad. That's just asking for trouble. Overall, areas for improvement. Uh, strength and depth everywhere, first of all. Need, really could use a, a great center back. One great non-attacking striker is something I'd like to see. And then just backups everywhere, young players everywhere, with that sort of thing. Uh, so that being said, I'll be right back as I continue with the offseason Start bringing in staff, start scouting players, figure out what we're going to do. If anything happens, in the meantime, I'll keep you updated. Okay, I have finally returned with the end of the summer, basically. Made a lot of deals, still more in progress. Got a few more bids out. Some people are trying to currently ship out of the team because they're superfluous to our needs. Taking a look, though, we made some spectacular signings, specifically in the attack. Uh, taking a look at our transfers, the transfer history, got a bunch of players shipped out, a ton of players brought in. We'll be meeting them as the team arises. Uh, but most importantly, areas that we're still looking to improve for stuff, we've got some players going out, a couple of players that we're trying to bring in. Mostly just non-contracts. Areas we're looking to improve still are this midfield position, specifically a playmaker, kind of the attacking midfield position, connecting this up. We've got young players with potential in the squad. Uh, we've got a goalkeeper who we're probably going to start eventually, because he's as good as our current goalkeeper, though he has gobs of potential. Got a lot of depth down here. Probably too much. Of course, that's because we're way over our wage budget. <laughs> like, spectacularly over our wage budget. And our team, I wonder if they'll let us increase the transfer budget. Also see if they'll allow us to increase the transfer revenue. Specifically because we're over by about 13k, and that's all coming down to a single player. The best player to call up bar none, and the best player in the league. But he's being paid 1.3k per month. Which is a lot, and he's also worth a lot, only on contract till the end of the year. Odds are about halfway through the system, 
Fari Moore is going to have to get sold because he is a national level player and we can't afford him. If we get rid of him, though, our wage situation will be much better. Of course, we do need to sign a left back if we want to do that. And currently, our left back situation, not great. We do have one in the development center that I think I'm going to bring up to the first team squad. Maybe not. We'll see. I'm feeling. But this squad we're going to be playing with. A cautious counter-attacking system, 4-3-3 narrow. I've set it up so the pitch is also going to be very narrow to take advantage. We have three spectacular strikers that I'm expecting to all play right together. And overall, I'm looking forward to the season. Our season preview has us as seventh place, which means we have a very good chance of making it into the playoffs. We have more in the top 11. We also have uh, Enoch Sante. And the best 11. These are our two main players and the two best players. Anybody else up here? So Moore is the best player. Dante is good. We don't have anybody else, it looks like, in the top 11. But we do have a lot of transfer activity. Our staff has been fully set up. We've got a bunch of good to decent options for our current level. Great to see. The main one we're going to be looking at, of course, is our assistant coach. Me. I'm not the assistant. Is our assistant coach Tristan Lewis, who's a 785 for his abilities? We've got other player people to make up for it. However, with that being said, I will be back next time with the first two games of the season it's Hemsford and Oxford City. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Once again, big shout out to Lugio for inspiring this. Hope this link will be down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. You should watch another. Please.